I don't... In this video, we're going to defend against the Seneca. So one of the most common techniques, especially in Kendo and in Gumdo, is going to be that elusive Seneca. So Senecas are nice because if they land, your opponent's going down, right? Like even if they're wearing armor and they're wearing headgear, a sufficient strike to the cranium, if they're wearing armor, is still going to concuss them. Uh, if they're not wearing armor, they're going to have their you know hemispheres resevered, right? Uh, versus a more powerful like diamond cut, which is going to be more powerful. It's going to be more wide range. Um, so the reason why center cuts are kind of a not quite a double-edged sword, but uh, a pro of it is what we just talked about with regard to uh, if I land it, they're dead. However, it is also the easiest thing to see coming, right? So if I'm here and I'm just like, <sighs> you're just like, I, it, it's very obvious. Uh, so if I do it towards the camera, because that might have a different thing, uh, from here, you just see, <sighs> you really see that giant swing back, even from hiding it with a step, it's very easy to see it coming, therefore you have like a knee-jerk reaction to be able to defend it. So we're going to first do the X and 11 block, which is kind of like the knee-jerk reaction. It's an okay block, it is a good passive block. Again, passive blocks are blocks I just throw out there, and allegedly I don't die. Uh, versus what's called an active block, and we'll do uh, two examples of an active block. Uh, active blocks are ones I'm actually engaging with the opponent's sword. I'm not just having it out there and waiting. I'm actually doing something alongside, and it's usually more effective, but it's also harder to land. Uh, let's take a look. So the very first block we're going to do, so if I actually start facing you, it's here. So imagine a center cut coming towards your cranium. Your first reaction might just be like, eh, right? And you won't be that, that far off, right? So the idea here is you want like the strong of your sword, right? So the one that's pretty close to the guard, you want that about over the crown of your head. And two hands, you want the tip to be far enough forward that it's going to be touching your elbows, and the tip far enough over that's covering your shoulders. So this is bad in both ways because this is not defending my cranium, it is not defending my elbows, it's not really doing anything. First, I bring that over. Better, but now my, if you swung, you still get my elbow. Reach forward. This is nice, right? So again, this is gonna be a passive block. I hold this out there and it's gonna defend whoever's coming, but it's not gonna be as effective as others. Uh, so 11 block, because it makes an 11 with your arms, versus the X block, because it makes an X with your arms. Uh, so if we do that, right? So for now, it's a nice, consistent drill. Uh, he's gonna slide forward with center cuts. All I'm gonna do is, as he comes in, I'm gonna block. And the ledge is gonna follow through, it's going to notice if I'm too close. If I'm here, I'm going to find out with my elbow being lost here. And as I step back, he's going to do it again, and again, and again. Uh, noticing the third one, I didn't block enough, right? And one more. And likewise, if I go against you, from here, strike, strike, strike. So that's a nice one for a just not wanting to die, right? Um, the next one we're going to do is a kind of good choice, right? You can either use the broad side, so the side of your sword, or you can use the back edge of the sword, right? So if it gives me a set cut for, for now slow, you can go side versus side here, get that out of the way, uh, mostly because you'll be going in for a nice cranium shot, right? Uh, you can also use the, uh, the ridge of the sword get a little bit more power, uh, but it's going to be, you have to reorganize your thoughts, right? So if you give me a cut, just here, I can come back in for a cut if I want to, right? Uh, so let's just do that. So I'll do uh, one set of broad and one set of uh, the ridge, right? So if you give me that center cut, the broad side, right? Because I really want to be in my cutting distance. So I can kind of slide back and give them space. I uh, try both sides, right? So if you give me that center cut, so broad side, and back. Broad side, and back. Broad side, and back. We'll do one more. Broad side, and back. And likewise, if you're going up to it, uh, I can do center cuts. So broad side, and back. Broad side, and back. Broad side, and back. And one more. Broad side, and back. 
versus the ridge, you're gonna notice that the sword does something slightly different. Uh, so with the broadside, if you give me that broadside, if I just do broadside, it's going to barely crest past my, my elbow. Uh, the idea with that is, uh, so this is a weird drill of doing backwards. In theory, what happen is I see you doing a center cut, and I'd be like, bang, whoop, that's really close now. Uh, I would see you giving me the center cut, I would come in this way. So I don't need to have a lot of you know, space, it's a close range strike. Uh, versus ridge hand, so if you give me that center cut using the back, bang, he's going to be a lot, <laughs> a lot more open, but now I have to come back in this way. But let's do a few of those, again, trying both sides. So give me that center cut, so um, Likewise, if I do the same, strike, 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 and strike. Make sense? And the last one we're going to do for today is going to be a lot more advanced. Uh, this is not something I, highly, I would recommend for anyone if it's like your first month or half a year. Like once you kind of get used to the mechanics of it, then you can kind of play with this one. This is a really high risk Sort of nice reward, it's more of a flashy move, but it is satisfying to last, or to, to land. Uh, so the idea is if you give me that center cut, you're going to be riding up, and you're going to be using your, uh, the back of your sword to curl down and strike. Uh, so without pausing too much, if you give me the same thing, be here, curl, in. Uh, this is not my good side, but we're going to try the other one. Right, so the center cut, catch, ride, back. Let's try a few going down. In back here, drop. In back here, drop. In back here, drop. And one more. And on top. And if you're feeling upward, you're going to shout back. Uh, from here, coming in that way. <laughs> and coming in that way. And coming in. Yeah. And one thing that, actually, at this point, you're going to be noticing that we're using uh, these guys and not the kind of hyper soft uh, safety swords. Um, so obviously, assume all risks yourself because I don't want to be responsible. Uh, I would highly recommend uh, if you and your partner are you know, consenting to this, use something a little bit more, <laughs> a little more threatening uh, because if we both had those really padded, super safe safety swords, like if I get hit, I might like just giggle. It's like, oh, like you got me, ha ha ha. You're not really learning <laughs> right, as well. Uh, versus if we kind of mess up and you're like, bang, like, okay, what I do? Okay, I, I need to not do that again. Um, so in general, I recommend, uh, if you want to use mukum, you can, so like our wooden swords, uh, but it's up to you. So obviously I highly recommend gloves, especially if you're doing this correctly. Um, but one reason I'm bringing that up is uh, you want to make sure that your partner's uh, you know, doing you a solid and actually trying to actually strike you. Uh, because there's this kind of weird thing with, especially martial arts, where you want the other person to look really good. So like if I'm here, and actually if you uh, turn this way, so we're a little bit closer to, closer on. So in theory, I want to strike his cranium whenever he blocks, right? Versus if I want to make him look good and I see him doing like an extra 11 block, for example, I'll be like, all right, if I really aim for his head, maybe this won't work. I'm going to aim off to the side here. Look, you blocked it. Versus if I consistently aim for his head, He's going to learn whether or not it works, right? Um, so if I keep on striking towards the head, he's going to learn like, oh, well, if I have my sword up and we block, okay, I might slide in this way, but then maybe he can do, you know, all sorts of fun that way. So you get an honest response. So if you actually face someone you've never met before and he had no obligation of making you look good, the technique's hopefully going to land, <laughs> as opposed to uh, if you always have like the weird like cult-like mentality of making someone else look good, you're not going to get better. Uh, so that was a weird turn <laughs> for this video, uh, but I guess with that, so uh, so try this drill out. So the last one is quite complicated, so make sure you especially go through that slowly, get a good vibe for it. And if it doesn't work for you, don't do it, right? Uh, so uh, this is one of those techniques. So the third one is one of those techniques that it's a flashy one. It makes you feel good if you land it. If it doesn't work for you, don't. Uh, but I guess with that, uh, make sure you stay safe, stay humble, and keep training. Hey, don't.